Oh, my goodness. Pray for the people that's in this sanctuary out there, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'd like to just say thank you for everything that you have done thus far, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask to say thank you for being in this room already. We come into this house, oh, Heavenly Father, giving you praise from the onset, oh, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask and I ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you empty me out and just use me as a vessel, oh, Heavenly Father. Fill me up with your word and your spirit, oh, God. Thank you for forgiving us for all our sins. Thank you for everything that you do and all the things that you make possible. In your daughter's son, Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. amen. Thank you guys for tuning in to Believer's Faith Fellowship Life Training School. All right, we're going to get running today. <sighs> all right, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 45. Oh, 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. We'll start reading. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Amen. The name of today's topic is no refunds, no exchanges. Let that settle in real fast. Let that settle in. No refund and no exchanges. We're going to be running through a couple of scriptures this morning. Uh, don't be flying with the text talking about he reading too much. Well, you got to read to get some understanding. See, Matthew chapter 13 says, this is a little different translation. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a dealer in search. Listen to that. In search of fine and precious pearls. I want y'all to hone in on that. Then it says, who, on finding a single pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. Mm. All right. So we're going to look at, see, a pearl. Pearls. What are pearls? The funny thing about pearls that you don't know. See, pearls are made inside of oysters. Some of y'all like to eat oysters. Some of y'all done broke some teeth on some oysters because you done accidentally bit into a pearl. But you see, the pearl is made from either a grain of sand or something put in a bacteria. It's a foreign object put inside of the oyster. And so when the oyster sees that this thing is inside of it, it starts to produce this liquid. And the liquid produces the pearl and it coats over because it's trying to protect itself from a foreign body. <laughs> All right, we're going somewhere. And so as it protects itself from this foreign body, it starts to grow in size. But it started from a foreign body, a bacteria or a piece of sand. Now, this process of pearl making comes down to almost five to six years in the process. I want y'all to imagine yourselves and put yourself in the pearl's place right now. Because the pearl that we're going to be talking about is you, it's us, it's me. Because we're going to put putting ourselves in a place where we are a foreign body and trying to get, it's a parasite to the oyster. Hmm. All right. What's the name of the today's topic? No refunds, no exchanges. So because this dealer seen this pearl and the pearl was so special to the dealer, he seen it, then he went and he sold everything that he had to get this one pearl. Jesus looks at all of us as that one pearl. He sees all of us, no matter what state we started in, we got into situations, and he sees us as that one pearl. And he goes and he purchases us, and he bought it. But you know, the thing is, sometimes some pearls aren't as perfect as you think they should be. Sometimes we go and buy things and get things and think that we want it. But then once we get it, we realize 
ah, that's not what I really, that's not what I really thought I purchased. And so when it comes to Jesus, listen to this. This is the definition of purchase, you guys. Purchase. We all think we know what definitions are, what words mean. But listen to this definition. The definition of the purchase is to obtain by paying money or its equivalent. Or its equivalent. Then it says to acquire an estate by means other than descent. Means you're not getting this just because somebody died and passed it on to you. But this is the kicker right here. This is the kicker. It says to obtain by labor, danger, or sacrifice. To obtain by labor, danger, or sacrifice. Now you're telling me when the Lord seen you as a pearl, he went and gave up everything to purchase you. But when he got you, what did he get? You was a parasite. You was a grain of sand. You wasn't even wanted. But this is what he gave up everything for was to buy you. And he's, and we talk about it's no refunds, no exchanges. Once he opened up and seen what he purchased, he said, all right, this is what I'm getting. He said, this is what I'm getting. This is a receipt, y'all. The Lord said, oh, backbiting, strife, jealousy, whoredoms, adultery, oh, lying, stealing, homosexuality, what, drug abuse, what, this is, what, what, oh my goodness, and it keeps coming. The Lord says, what did I purchase? John chapter 19, verse 28. This is the purchase. John chapter 19, verse 28. And the word of God reads. After this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, says the now listen to this. He got thirsty. We know what time this is. He gets up on the cross. What does he use to purchase us? He says, 29 says, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop. Tried to make vinegar a little bit of sweetness. <laughs> they tried to make vinegar a little bit of sweetness. He said, and when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So when the Lord purchased us, look at, that's what he purchased. His purchase. He made that purchase when he got up on that cross. When he died and he gave up the ghost. Even knowing what was, at first he didn't really know what was on y'all's receipt. On our receipt, the Lord sent him down. He said, son, the only way man is going to survive. I need you to go down and, and do something. I need you to go down and purchase them. But you see, you, 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 you can't purchase them with the uh, blood of bulls and goats. The only way you can purchase the humans that I made and we put on that earth is through you. And he didn't even have a problem. So the goods that the Lord purchased, are we pearls? The word said he saw the pearl and he seen how beautiful it was. He saw the sand that was already going to be formed. And he said, okay, I, I, I'm going to still get, I'm going still, I'm, I'm to still do it. And, and, and then Exodus 32 happens. Exodus 32 happens a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. How, many, how much of our life can we say we didn't put on receipts this long? And still. Ah, Exodus 32. Exodus 32 verse. Uh, oh, verse six. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, 
and rose up to play. Pause, pause. Wait, wait, just a second. Wait, just a second. A little, little back history. Moses, then the Lord then helped the children of Israel come out of Egypt. So Moses goes up on the mountain to go get some laws, some commandments from God. But you see, the people that's been down there, Moses take it too long. He just take it too long. Even though the Lord done brought these people from bondage, from slavery, from all the other stuff that they was crying to get out of, but this is how they start to act just for in a little while when their leader wasn't there to show them the way. It says they went down, they went down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. They rose up because now we don't got nobody looking over us. We just going to play. We going to eat. And some of y'all know that play ain't just like going to play volleyball, going to play baseball, going to go play football. These are adult people we talking about. And they playing. All right. Verse 7 says. And the Lord said unto Moses, go, get thee down. For thy people which thou brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead, read verse 9. Then we're going we to break this down just a little bit. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. What? Is this what God is purchasing? It says they done rose up to play. They done forgot about me. They done forgot the good stuff. How many times have we forgot what the Lord has done for us? And we think at the time, oh, he done forgot about us. So we're going to do what we want to do. We're going to get up and play. It says they have corrupted themselves. That's what's on these receipts. That's what he done purchased. We done corrupted ourselves. They done corrupted themselves. And they have turned aside quickly. Not slowly. Not well, we're going to think about. We're going to think about doing some bad. No, they went straight to the good stuff. They went to the hard liquor. They didn't, they didn't start at the, uh, the, 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 the wine coolers. They went straight to the bourbon, to the whiskey, to the old English style whiskey. That when you swallow it, it said, oh. At that middle of your throat. They went straight to the good stuff. They turned aside quick, quickly. We say, I commanded them, and they have molten calves, and this is this, and they worship it. What are they worshiping? What do we worship? Do we worship those, those, those Fendi bags? Do we worship those Louis Vuitton bags? Do we worship them diamond rings, them Cadillacs, them Lincolns? The Mercedeses, those Audis, those Lexuses. Do we worship those things? As soon as we get a new car, it already got 15 or 18 inch rims on it. But you know what? We got to get the 32 rims. We got to make sure when we roll through town, they can say, oh, yeah, chased and made it. Now, so what are we worshiping? The Lord say, yeah, you, you can keep on putting that, putting that, putting that on. That's yeah, I know that's on your receipt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you, you want old girl with the, mm-hmm, uh, all right, yeah, go ahead, put that. Oh, you want five of them? Okay, go ahead, put that on there. You want old boy? Oh, yeah, go ahead, put that on there. You want old girl? Oh, yeah, put that on there. You want old girl's wife? Yeah, I said old girl's wife. You want old boy's husband? Yeah, uh-huh. All that's on him? Uh-huh. All that, he, he just keep on, re he said, and they corrupted themselves. And when they went out of Egypt and the Lord said to Moses, you know what? You know what? Yeah, these people, they just stiff-necked. The Lord is, is purchasing pearls with stiff necks. Can you imagine the Lord look at us and say, you know what? I know. I know. I know. In verse 10 says, and listen, sometimes we just got to have an intercessor. <laughs> verse 10 says, now, therefore, let me alone. This is the Lord saying, let me alone, Moses. <laughs> let me alone. He said that my wrath may wax hot against them. And I can make consume them, and I will make a make a thee a great nation. The Lord said, "You know what? I done had enough of them. I done had enough. You know, I just get rid of them for you." And Moses, out of you, I make you a great nation. 
but good God, Moses, if you read on there, Moses said, no, you can't mess up your testimony, God. Why are we going to mess up your testimony? How are we going to let the people say the people that you brought out of Egypt, let them say you killed, you brought the people out of Egypt to kill them? Nah, we can't let you do that, God. And the, and the Lord, he said, all right, but get down there, take care of some of them people. Oh, but what else? Second Corinthians verse 12. And 20. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20, sweetheart. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, Mm -hmm. Verse 21. And lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you mm -hmm. and that I shall be well many which have sinned already mm -hmm. and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. So we see in the old and the new some stuff just keep on happening, huh? He says, I come back. I fear some things. Because I come back and maybe some debating, some envying, some wrath, some strife, some backbiting, some whispering, some, some swelling, some tumults. All this is what he's getting. No refunds, no exchanges. I'm sorry, sometimes I done went to the store, I done bought some shoes, I done bought a shirt. But after a while, I'm like, huh, that's not what I really thought I purchased. It has a tear in it. It has a blemish. It has an imperfection. The imperfection that it has, I'm not willing to accept. So I'm going to take it back. Oh my God, what if the Lord did us like that? What if the Lord looked and said, you know what, Chase, uh, ooh, you look at some stuff on TV at night I just don't agree with. Oh, you think about some stuff in your mind I just don't agree with. You put some stuff in your body I just don't agree with. I think I'm going to have to give you back. Oh, my God. All that is on my receipt. <laughs> so my receipt ain't always been white like this. If my receipt still ain't white like this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We going somewhere, y'all. We going somewhere because what is a receipt? Because time is flying right about now. Receipt. A receipt is, it's a written acknowledgement that receiving a goods or money. It's a written acknowledgement that you bought something. That's what our life is to God. It's a written acknowledgement that he bought and he purchased us. Oh my goodness. So if he has the receipt of something that he bought and he purchased, doesn't that mean he owns it now? If you say you are a child of God and he has purchased your life and given you salvation, that means he owns you. You don't own him. But we try to put the Lord in uh, the Aladdin genie bottle and think we could just rub on him when we should be praying to him all the time. We think he should just pop out when we get on our knees and try to start praying a little bit. <laughs> we going somewhere. We going somewhere. We going somewhere. Y'all still with me? We still rolling? Oh, my goodness. Because if he could exchange us, what is an exchange? An exchange, it says it's an act of giving one thing or receiving another, especially of the same type or value in return. Hmm. It says also to give something or receive something of the same kind in return. Pretty much the same thing, right? Huh. Luke chapter 13, verse 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. 
<laughs> and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Stop. All right. The Lord has been doing parables for these people. And he's getting ready to drop another good parable on some people right about now. He says, the, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and he sought fruit thereon and found, found none. So he done went and bought a fig tree. He done planted this fig tree. And what is the purpose of the fig tree? Figs to produce fruit. Put yourself in that fig tree. That's you. That's us. That's me. Verse 7. Then he said, Then said he unto dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years. How many years? Three years. How many years? Three. Come on, say it. Three years. Come on now. I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. Okay. And find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? That looked like somebody bought something. They wasn't happy with the results. Like somebody bought something and they was expecting a product. They was expecting a reward to come from what they purchased. I'm sorry. When you buy a car, you get a car to drive it, not to sit inside of your garage. When you go to buy, when you go and buy a steak, you expect the steak to be good, right? When you go and buy clothes, you expect the clothes to fit so you can wear them, right? Hmm. You expect the return. If you go and plant a garden and you put some peas, some tomatoes out there, you expect a harvest, right? It says he found none, but after three years, the dresser says, three years I've been waiting. You know what? It's time for me to make an exchange. Verse 8. And he answered. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, he said he was seeking the fruit and he, he found none. But then he said, I want to cut it down. He said, I want to take, I, just get rid of it because it is wasting space in my vineyard. Because it is not producing anything for me. It's not even producing flowers. It's not producing leaves because we know what a fig tree does. Before the fig tree can even produce leaves, it has to produce figs. Y'all get that. That's all right. Y'all get it. That means right now it's nothing but sticks and limbs and branches. An unsightly thing. How many of y'all like to see unsightly fall trees? Aren't y'all ready for the spring to come to see leaves on the trees? Because the leaves bring up upon beauty. They bring upon shade. They give some type of purpose. Verse 8. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And, Go ahead, verse 9. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that sh you, thou shalt cut it down. You see, y'all ain't, I should be, y'all should be, oh my goodness! Come on now! You got it. The same dresser or the same guy here that's answering the Lord is the same person that was in the field looking at the pearls and said I will go and buy all the pearls I'm looking for that one particular pearl it's beautiful to me sister Paige you're beautiful to me sister Val you're beautiful to me brother Rick you're beautiful to me and you the tree give it a second let me let me take care of it let me don't exchange it yet God don't exchange it yet let me cultivate it let me let me let me dig around. Let me get the weeds from around it. Let me make it a hospitable environment. Let me, even though I'm gonna make it a hospitable environment, I'm gonna actually go ahead and put some crap on it. It may stink a little bit. It may not smell perfect at the time, but I'm gonna put some dung on it. If y'all don't know what dung is, dung is like cow manure. So I'm gonna put some dung around it, even though it may stink and it may smell. I'm gonna nurture it. So we can bring a forth, forth the fruit that you've been looking for. So it can bring either some leaves so it can some provide some shade to you. But it says, and if it bears fruit, fruit not, then well, then we could possibly exchange it. But you know, if you got a good cultivator, you got somebody with a good green thumb that puts just enough interest, it's just enough passion within something into a garden, it's going to grow. He said, don't exchange it yet. 
don't exchange a check, even though you see them lying all the time, even though you see them stealing all the time, even though you see them sleeping with everybody else all the time, even though you see all that. Let me have time with them. I know what I done purchased. I, just, I see it on the receipt. I see the doubt. I see the faithfulness on them. I see the stinking on them. I see the whoredoms on them. I see the titty bopping on them. Yes, I said it. Don't mute me out because this is real life now. I see that on them. You see, that's what problem. You know, I, I, some people probably just tune me out. But that's the problem with church sometimes. Y'all say y'all want it real, but when somebody give it to you real, you can't swallow it. You see, if, this ain't even in my lesson. Let me tell you a little something. See, hospitals are made for people that are sick. See, we try to tell people all the time the church is a hospital. But you see, that's the, that's the wrong thing to tell them. The church can be a hospital, but the issue with hospitals, people go to hospitals to either be healed or cured, and so they can leave. So but the problem is a lot of people go to the hospital and just want to stay. A lot of people trying to come to church and just want to stay the way they are. The thing about church is they come in and we should get them healthy enough to be able to go out. Not to stay sick in their ailments. Not to stay sick in their in they faults. Not to, we want to help them. Sick people, we need to get them well. We don't want them to come to church and die. You don't go to the hospital to die. You go to the hospital for some help. All right, let's come back. Let's come back. Oh, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. I got it. It says, the word which came to Jeremiah, listen to this now. From the Lord says, arise and go down to the potter's house. This is going to be very, very good and interesting, y'all. Because this is going to go right back up here with, with the dresser of the vineyard. It says, now go down to the potter's house where I will cause thee to hear my words. Are we ready to hear his words? It says, then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all got to ride with me. He said, on the wheel, as I went to the potter's house, I went in and I seen the potter. He was already spinning a piece of clay. Y'all have seen uh, what's that movie, Ghost, or whatever it is called? They start making that pot, and it starts to go around. It's just a lump of clay at the time. But as he puts his hands on it, they start to spin the wheel. The world is going around with that pot of clay, y'all. Just think about who the potter is. The potter is the same one that's seen a pearl and said, I'll go and buy, I'll go and sell everything just to buy that one pearl. As he spins this thing around, it says he was wroth, work on the wheel. And verse 4 says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in his hands on the, of the potter. Marred means there's some grooves, there's some indentions, there's something in there. That means he is still working with it, right? It says, so he made it again another vessel. That means what he had made the first time wasn't all perfect and didn't look all good. That means some of this stuff. When people try to come back in our lives, when we say we're serving God, they say, well, do you remember all this? <laughs> you remember all that stuff you used to do? <laughs> yeah, you go right there. And the Lord said, you know what? I, I, I know what I got. Because now they're in my wheel. I'm putting them, and I'm spinning them around in this world of mine. And I'm, while I'm spinning them around in this world, they done went through all that stuff. And, and I'm going to form them into, into another piece of art, another vessel. And it says it seemed good to the potter to make it. And then he's, he's going to drop a bombshell. See, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, <laughs> it said, oh, house of Israel, can I do with you as the potter has? The Lord said, can I, can, Karen, can I not do with you what the potter did? Can I not do, says the Lord, he said, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in mine, O house of Israel. He said, I purchased y'all. When you make a pearl necklace, don't you know you have to get a lot of pearls to make a pearl necklace? And then to make that pearl necklace, you got to drill a hole through it, then put it on, on a string to make it lock up with the other ones. 
He said, I could do that. I see y'all as pearls. That's the house. That's the house of the Lord. It is like heaven. All us pearls are going to be necklaces for God. Yo, that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. We'll just keep on rolling. Yo. He said, y'all are my pearls. He said, yeah, I know what I got, but I'm going to form y'all into something totally different than what you started. You started out as a piece of sin. You started off out as bacteria. You started out not being wanted. But you know that bacteria turned into something that was gorgeous to, in my eyes. You was a precious and fine pearl. Oh, but you know, you got to have a proof of purchase. Some people don't want to know what the proof is. Or some people are like, what is the proof of purchase? Because before you go to try to exchange or give something back, you have to have the proof of purchase. Oh, it's the evidence showing that something that you bought. John chapter 20, verse 27. Oh, I got three other subtopics. I am not going to get to them. Ah. John 20, verse 27. I'll read verse 26 as my wife is getting 27. It says, and after eight days, this is after Jesus had passed, you guys. Some of the disciples just saw him already, but one wasn't where he was supposed to be at the time. It says, and after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, because Thomas wasn't where he was supposed to be the first time. It says, then came Jesus to the door, being shut, stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Why he had to say that? Because I know y'all seeing the ghost. Don't y'all scream. Don't you lose your mind. Then verse 27 comes to hit. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Because why? This is, this is the proof of the purchase. Yeah, he was up on the cross. But then Thomas wasn't sure, did I get purchased that day? Some of us are the same way. I ain't been to church in 50 years. Did I get purchased that day? I didn't go to church last week. Did I get purchased on that day? The Lord said, yeah, you got purchased. This is the proof right here. Thomas said, I, I don't know. But the Lord said, you know what? St stick your finger right here. Those are the holes that when I was up on the cross, I held up there. Stick your, stick your hand in my side where the water and the blood ran out. Stick it up in there. This is the proof of the purchase. I bought you that day, Thomas. I brought you that day, day Deacon Ken. I, brought, I bought you that day. I, this is the proof of purchase. And the thing is, I don't even want a refund. No matter what's on all this receipt. I don't even want an exchange. No matter whatever you still are doing, I know I can change you because you are the clay in my hands. I purchased you for a reason. I purchased you for my kingdom. And I don't want a refund. Oh my God. Oh my God. See, because see, because a refund, a refund says it's a payback. Typically to a customer who is not satisfied with goods or services bought. I'm sorry. If I was Jesus about my life, I'd be like, refund, please. Can I get a refund for this? This is not what I expected. This is not what I put my good money to. This is not what I hung up on the cross for. This is not what I gave up the last breath in the Holy Ghost for. This is not what I am not a satisfied customer. Because I purchased something that I thought it was going to have a significant value, but I see I purchased a piece of garbage. But the Lord said the garbage, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Jesus gets us and puts us on his neck and he says, I will wear you. 
I will put all your burdens on me. I will put all your lost cares on me. I'll put all your sins and all your imperfections on me. I will carry you. I will wear you. I will support you because that is what you are to me. No refunds, no exchanges needed because you are what I chose and looked at and purchased. It thought it was enough to give up my all for you. <laughs> oh my God. No refunds, no exchanges. Oh, 10 minutes. Oh, we're going to get this in. Oh, we're going to get it in. Oh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. 17 and 5 read, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That was Genesis 17, verse 5. Mm -mm. My notes are wrong. I'm so sorry, you guys, because mine is Genesis. Because the scripture I have, it says, verse 13 says, He that is born in my house, bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. Oh, sorry. My faux pas. It's not on my wife. Add that to my account. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. See, when he says right there, my covenant shall be in thy flesh, the flesh, the people had to give up some flesh to show their proof. Y'all get that? <laughs> to show their proof of an everlasting covenant. Then verse 6 says, and the uncircumcised man, child whose flesh or his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from the people, and he has broken my covenant. Why is that important? See, because back then we had to show some type of proof of our purchase, a proof of our faithfulness, a proof that we are part of. But you see, he had to do a little something. Because 1 Corinthians 7, 21, read, I'm going to read this, sweetheart, so you don't have to run there that fast. He says, because this, this, it ties hand in hand, because back in the old, they had to show that proof. But here in the new, it says, art thou called being a servant? We are called, right? Care not for it, but it is thou mayest be made free. Oh, ooh, I can't start there because yeah, it, won't, it won't relate. So verse 17 says, ah. But as God has disturbed to, uh, distributed to every man, as the Lord has called every one, so let him walk. Listen to this. And so ordained I in all churches. So thought it had to be, and it, you had to be circumcised at this time. See, verse 18 says, is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. This is the, it was a debate. Then verse 19 says, circumcision is nothing. Oh, and uncircumcision is nothing. Wow. But keeping of the commandments of God is good. Verse 20 says, so let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. So if we are called, we are purchased, we have some things we have to do. And what the, the important thing is about it, once you have been purchased and you've been called, you flee from all this stuff. It says, art thou called to be a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it, rather. Then verse 22 says, for he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. So you may be a servant to God, but you still free. See, likewise, also that he is called being free is Christ's servant. So it works hand in hand. The purchase and all this stuff, he don't look at that. You free now and move forward. It says, ye are bought with the price. Be ye not servants of men. Don't be servants of this world. Don't be servants of those false idols that you got. Don't be servants of that crap no more. Because the funny thing, I'm getting ready to finish up. The funny thing about a receipt have y'all ever noticed something? If y'all worked in retail before, 
You see all this white, most of the time it's got black printing on it, blue printing, but it's funny. By the time you get to the end of the receipt, it starts to show you something different. That's some red at the end of a receipt. That's the Lord. That's the blood, guys. The Lord say, I purchased at the end of the receipt that you think you have. All that stuff at the back end don't even matter no more because I purchased you. You may be at the end of your receipt, but you know what? I got mine. and I, I've given you salvation. Oh, as I finish, I'm going to leave y'all with this one last definition. <laughs> This one last definition, you know, we're getting ready to get into the holiday season. And a lot of people purchase gifts. And when you purchase a gift, sometimes you get a gift receipt. <laughs> Listen to this. What is a gift receipt, God? It says it's a proof that something has been bought and paid for. That does not show. Listen to this. That does not show the price paid. Given to someone with a present so that if the present is not suitable, they can return it to the shop. The Lord said, you know what? I'm not going to give y'all no gift receipt because y'all be too stupid to know. <laughs> y'all be too stupid to know what the value of what I just purchased and bought. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm done. If I can't get an amen or hallelujah behind that, I'm done. No refunds, no exchanges. That's what the Lord said when he purchased us. Because they are precious and fine pearls in my eyes. And I gave up everything to purchase them. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have done, all the things that you have made possible. Thank you for seeing us in your eyes as a fine jewel, a fine pearl, even starting out as something that was unwanted, oh, Heavenly Father, something that was seen as an invasion, something that was seen as an infection that you seen good enough in us to say, just give them a while. But I can cultivate them. I can, I, can, I can love them. I can put some niceness, some love in their hearts. And I can change them to become something precious and beautiful that I don't want to give back. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. All the things that you have made possible. Thank you for purchasing us into your kingdom. Thank you. In your daughter's son, Jesus' name, we pray and we say amen.